I often get asked, can you recommend a good quality dimmable LED lamp? And the answer is no, because it's a really complex subject. And I've kind of stalled with making this video because it really is so complex. You see, let's start off with the way that traditional tungsten lamps used to be controlled because all the wall plate dimmers these days tend to be phase angle control. Um, and ultimately, the future is going to be completely different wall plate dimmers. But at the moment, we're still stuck with the traditional dimmers which were designed for tongues and lamps. So here's how they work. If this is the sine wave, this is the main sine wave, then to control the intensity of the lamp, you use what's called the phase angle control, which means that you basically turn the light on and off within that sine wave. And... The component that was designed originally to do that, the one that became the first commercial one that could be used in home use was the triac. And the typical triac circuit looks like this. Here's a triac. And the triac's interesting. It's designed for switching power uh, like this. Uh, it's usually rated quite high voltage and it's rated quite high current and it has a latching effect. So let's uh, draw the sort of schematic. So here's the traditional tungsten filament lamp. There's the AC coming in. And here is the triac in the circuit. Now, the, the characteristic of triacs is that they've got a gate connection. And with reference to what they call MT1, the gate, if it's taken either positive or negative, depending on the sort of wave, uh, the polarity uh, across the track, um, it will turn that track on. And once the track's on, it latches. And the only way to turn the track back off again is to reduce the current going through it to zero. It has what's called a holding current. Well, not completely to zero. It has a minimum holding current, which is usually about, say, 50 milliamps. And that is also a problem with these dimmers. So to control the uh, phase angle control with these, they have a resistor, a variable resistor, a capacitor, and then a device called a DIAC. A DIAC is a little bi-directional trigger diode. And basically speaking, as soon as the voltage across that reaches about 30 volts, it suddenly turns on. And here's the, the idea. This resistor limits the amount maximum current that could flow through the circuit, but this uh, variable resistor then limits the intensity by varying the time on each half wave that it takes to charge this capacitor up. As soon as that capacitor reaches about 30 volts, this conducts, fires the pulse into that, and suddenly it turns the lamp on in that half wave. And what this means is that you get what's called a leading edge. So let's just write leading edge under here. And this is very electrically noisy. What it means is that if you set it to the middle of the sine wave, the current would suddenly turn on right in the middle, uh, and it would stay on for the second half of that half of the sine wave. And because the circuit's symmetrical and it works in both directions with the different polarities, uh, it would then turn up on in the bottom half the sine wave as well, right in the middle, and then stay on until it passed the zero crossing point again. And that basically uh, is, that just repeats continually on the sort of mains frequency. And this creates a lot of noise. So usually these things require chokes and series and it requires filter components and snubber networks across the track. It's stuff that we don't really need to look at at the moment. But the main thing we have to know here is that uh, the tungsten filament lamps have a high thermal inertia. The filament takes a while to heat and it takes a while to cool. You turn the lamp on, it dims up, uh, and you turn it off and it dims down. I mean, it happens very quickly. You don't really see it too much. But um, the fact that the power is being chopped on and off at either 100 or 120 hertz, depending on where you live, means that uh, this filament uh, will even that out. and It will look like a fairly consistent intensity. However, it is very electrically noisy, and the first thing they did to solve that was the brought in trailing edge dimmers. And these were sort of when they when they first started getting decent MOSFETs that could handle the high voltages. Uh, so trailing edge. And what they do is instead of turning on in the middle of the sine wave, they turn on at the very beginning when it's zero volts, and it gently ramps up, and then it turns off at the designated point within the sine wave where you want that job. So for half power, so to speak, it would turn off halfway through the sine wave. And likewise, on the other half of the sine wave, it would turn on right at zero cross point, gently ramp up, and then it would turn off again. And because it's, the, because it's not got that sharp 
sudden turn on. It's basically got a sharp turn off instead. It doesn't create a huge inrush pulse of current, and these things require, the trailing edge dimmers require much less in the way of suppression. It means that, I suppose ultimately they're cheaper to make as well, because uh, it means they don't need these big toroidal chokes and things inside the dimmers. <laughs> However, when we use LED lamps with these dimmers, a problem occurs. Because, uh, firstly, you have to have a minimum load to make these dimmers latch. And it's not so much a problem with the trailing edge dimmers, but with the old leading edge dimmers with the tracks, it was a problem because without that load, the track won't latch. And all you'll get is a very dull glow because the track's getting its trigger pulse and then it's just instantly turning back off again because there's nothing to hold it on. But it gets more complex than this with LED lamps because if you take a look at the simplest type of LED lamp, just the capacitive dropper lamp, then... The first capacitive dropper lamps were very sim simple. The first LED lamps, they had the capacitor with this little discharge resistor. You've seen me draw this so many times, uh, which would then get rectified. And what, the, what this does, the capacitor here just lets a small portion of current through in each half wave. And the first ones didn't have smoothing. They, they just used a resistor, as do these ones. And the resistor was there to so that when you turn the, uh, the LED lamp on at the wall, if it if it turned on somewhere at the peak of the sine wave and this capacitor was suddenly had the full mains voltage, peak mains voltage across it, you'd get a sudden current spike. And the point of this resistor was just to uh, limit the, the current to save the LEDs. So here's the rect far. Here are the LEDs. Let's just draw three LEDs. There'd be quite a lot. In this case, there are, sh there are shed loads of LEDs in that. And... That's fine, you know, you turned it on and after that initial spike when you turned it on, it, the capacitor would be seeing a sine wave, which is quite a gradual change of voltage, so the, there wouldn't be any huge current fluctuations through this. But when you run that in the dimmer, and you've got an S set, well, anywhere near the middle, then this it's the equivalent of turning this on at the full mains voltage every half wave. So you're doing it 100 to 120 times a second, depending on whether your mains frequency is 50 or 60 hertz. And suddenly... That's just passing lots of sharp spikes through, really sharp spikes. And that's not just detrimental to LEDs because they're seeing the spikes, but this resistor, which was designed to handle just one or two, um, you know, switch on transients, suddenly it's basically forming a, a filter with this capacitor here. And it's seeing a lot of these spikes and it's trying to dissipate them and it starts getting warm. And one of the most common failures with these is the resistor gets very hot and it's a toss up where the LED fails or the resistor fails first. So they're just not easily dimmed. There's also a problem the fact that uh, a lot of these lamps and some of them that they claim are dimmable have a lot of LEDs in series. And the thing about having a lot of LEDs in the series is if this is the if this is one half of the sine wave, then th the LEDs may not actually light until it reaches this voltage here. And that means that for a start, uh, you're restricted to this area of the sine wave. And if the dimmer actually goes up without those, out those areas, like if you dim it too low, it will suddenly cut off. Uh, and when you start dimming it up, it'll, it will reach that point. It will be a sudden transition it will be on. It will then ride across. And then way before uh, it's... Uh, when you try turning it up to the... Uh, should I say, when you try turning it down to the lower level, it will suddenly just cut off at the end. So it's a very sort of non-linear curve. So let's take a look at an, another type of circuit then that we could use. The other type of circuitry would perhaps be the... Uh, types with capacitors or the capacitive dropper with a smoothing capacitor and this also has huge problems. Say for instance let's take a look at this little uh, driver for LEDs, it's a little 3 watt driver and its arrangement is like this, it's got the mains coming in and it instantly goes through a bridge rectifier with a little fusible resistor and the output then charges a capacitor, a smoothing capacitor, and these lamps are not generally designed to be dimmed at all. They're designed, in this case, this little driver is just designed mains applied, lamp lights, that's it. Turn the power off, the lamp will go out, that's all. What actually happens when you try uh, driving these, so let's, uh, let's abbreviate the circuitry and just show an LED, big high power LED connected in the output of that, and uh, drive, just make, call that driver. So what actually happens now when you're trying to control this on the phase angle control, if this is the sine wave, 
then it doesn't really matter where you turn that on. That capacitor is just suddenly going to charge to a very high level and say the driver will happily operate down to say about this voltage. As long as that capacitor is charged up to that voltage, it'll basically, the driver will try and run at full output. And what this means is that uh, that capacitor there, the smoothing capacitor, is basically trying to undo all the dimming you're sending it. Instead of uh, you being able to actually turn it on, say, what's the best way to describe this? It's quite hard to say. If you were turning it on halfway through, that capacitor would instantly charge up. And instead of, you know, turning off at the zero crossing point, it would then, all it would do is the capacitor would start just charging through the driver. And then when you got to the next sort of half the sine wave, the same thing would happen. And this gives really odd things. It's not only extremely damaging to the actual circuitry, it can it can make the little uh, safety resistor, it can make it blow, it can put up a lot of stress in this capacitor, which is basically getting stabbed, it's getting charged really high at a high speed and then trailing off. But it results in a very odd characteristic that again results in you basically you try and dim it down but it stays at full intensity all the way and then just suddenly dies at the end. So the ways they get round this, the simplest way and it's horrific, is just to use uh, the incoming supply, goes through a bit of direct fire, and instead of having that smoothing capacitor, they've just got a very basic filtering capacitor, and they use a simple driver, again, that just rides the sine wave. It doesn't try and smooth it at all. There might be a little bit of smoothing the output, but it basically is just... As soon as the, it's getting power, say you've got the phase arm control is going halfway, it'll then start driving the lamp from that point. But because um, because it's not got that smoothing capacitor anymore, it means that when you go to the other half of the sine wave, should I say, when it's off, that you know instead of actually that smoothing effect of the filament, what you actually get is. A strobing effect. The LED is lighting, the driver's kicking in, and the LED is lighting while that uh, part of the sine wave switched, and then it's completely off for that bit. There's no evening out of it, so you end up with these lamps that just flicker really visibly at 100 or 120 hertz, and as you dim it down, it, it, it gradually, as you get to the lower end, it just basically the light output of it is a series of very short spikes, and it's just very flickery. Now, some of the manufacturers tried to design systems that were quite intelligent. There, there have been loads of different things that have been designed. Like things that basically take what, what's being fed to them in the sine wave, they'll analyse it, they'll look at the phase angle, and they'll also just do this charging the capacitor up full as soon as it gets power. But it'll analyse it, and then it'll try and drive the LED using pulse of modulation um, which means turning the LED on and off at really high speed but varying the on-to-off ratio. And it tries to fake the dimming based on what it sees in the sine wave. It's really complex and it's, uh, it makes those lamps very expensive and an awful lot of circuitry in them to try and achieve not only deriving power from this very chopped up sine wave but also actually then trying to switch the LED to get the sort of intensity variation. So I see the, the future of the LED dimmers as either being, well, the Bluetooth type LEDs, you know, the lamps that have remote control, or a wall plate that has the knob in it, but it, all it does is the power is that's going through, the wall plate takes a, a small voltage for its operation, and then the LED lamp takes its small bit. But then these two communicate between each other, uh, using either paired with a low-level radio wave, or even I suppose it could just uh, it could actually control it by modulating data onto the power, uh, because the best way to dim LEDs without that horrible flickering is to use pulse with modulation. That's where you're maybe pulsing the LEDs on and off, but at really high frequency from about 300 hertz upwards. It's, it becomes much less obvious that lights are being strobed on and off. And in the case of pulse and modulation, all you do is the lights are, the LEDs are either on or off, and if it's a wee tiny time they're on, then they look dim. But if it's, you know, uh, if they're on for half the time, it looks half intensity and so on. So that's the, the way to go in the future, but anything that's trying to drive an LED off a traditional triac or MOSFET-based wall dimmer is, it's it's trying to use technology that was designed for this lamp 
to drive LEDs. And they're just two completely different technologies. They're not really compatible for that control of the dimming. So, um, yeah, everything's a bit of a compromise at the moment. I'm not sure what the future really holds at the moment. But um, it's going to take a radical change. It's going to be that this traditional wall plate dimmer will disappear because it's it really is. They're just two completely incompatible technologies. So that's why I don't really recommend any particular LED lamps for dimming because I've never been too impressed by dimble lamps. You get the ones that flicker. You get the ones that try to be quite clever and, and dim, but they're very expensive for what you're getting. And in the first place, the, the old traditional wall plate dimmers just they need that high load, so not, some of them are just not going to work anyway. Oh, there's another another thing happens because uh, because the ones that uh, switch the driver on and off and sort of try and follow the sine wave because they're basically going in bursts with the sort of mains frequency being switched. They buzz every time that little drive circuit kicks in. It makes a slight click, and it does that 100, 120 times a second. So that's why some of the uh, dimmable LED lamps actually make a bit of a buzzing noise while they're dimming. So yeah, two completely incompatible lighting technologies. So yeah, I don't know what the future holds for dimming. I think it's going to be ultimately remote control wall plates because uh, the existing system doesn't really work that well.